coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. Welcome back to the Paper Stack Podcast. My name is Rick Allen. This is Brett Berkey. How's it going? Going good. Good. We're back today for another edition of My First Note Purchase. And we have an all-star up today, somebody near and dear to all of our hearts, sitting right next to me. This man, Brett Berkey, purchased his first note, and he is going to share everything about it. Yeah. And I think it's really cool because a lot, a lot of the people we've had on so far who have, per- have gone through purchasing their first note, they're, they're down the road. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm 12 years into this or a decade, a little over 11 years into this. You know, we've had Troy Fullwood on, who, man. Yeah, he's been around for a while. He's been around for a while. Not, not love you, Troy, not that you're old, but you just, you're a veteran in there. Kevin Shortell. Kevin Shortell, my goodness, forever. Chris Sebney's been doing this a while. So we, just a lot of the people we've had on have just been, they've been doing this for a while. Their first note was years, years, and years ago. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that you are brand new in it. Right? Yeah. You didn't purchase it that long ago. Mm-hmm. No. So, tell you know, everyone, obviously, we ask people along the way, like, hey, what's your journey into the world of notes? Well, you bumped into me at a grocery store, yeah. and I More. said some jackass comment, like, nice backpack. and I had a froggy backpack. That was my daughter's. So, it was cute. But uh, running ahead at a grocery store with a froggy backpack on was... <laughs> <laughs> Probably not a good thing. Well, whatever, it was fine. <laughs> Look, it was a great thing. Yeah, it actually was, actually. Yeah, you know, it's, here we are. What if yeah. we never bumped into yeah, each other there? That's true. Everyone what if? Might not be a paper stack, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, for the longest time, I just didn't I didn't invest in, just because I did other things. You know, like, there's a lot of other stuff I, I put my money in and invest. And, it was just and we were busy building. Build, just build, busy building the site. It was, yeah. That's my focus is building the site. and it's, you know, yeah, I think it's kind of funny because people say like, well, when you're not doing paper stack, what are you doing? And Brett's always said sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. We work a lot on this. So yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, but I love it. It's just fun. So, so you, you decided you decided you want to start investing. But actually, you started setting up like funding and stuff like that for this long before you ever purchased your first note. Right. I have stuff in infinite banking, which is using a life insurance policy to do investing vehicles. And so I do stuff like investing in unsecured loans, like Prosper and different things. We have, used to have the lending club. Uh, and then I had all the stuff with stocks, but I don't, I don't really like stocks anymore. Uh, and then did the inv- infinite banking for a number of years. And then I also do a thing called TARDIS, where it's basically income snowballs. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, you know, I invested in a number of different funds. And then it just was like, why am I out there like finding all these different methods? And when I'm, the people that are on TARDIS are investing in notes as well. I mean, I've set enough episodes to know a couple things. Not to mention, if you have any questions, you can just look over your shoulder. That's right. I have a, one of the best mentors sitting right next to me. I just, I, you know, there's Bug Rick, and he'll give me the look and not have to <laughs> answer my funny question. But yeah, no, it said, just was like, it was one of those ones I was just, I was, yeah, I, I set up safe searches for like what would match a TARDIS fast burning fuel. Note, which and is what? So it's more a shorter term note, like eight to ten. That trying to get eight to ten, and usually when you're doing a fast performing burning, or non performing, always performing, always performing. So the goal is to create cash flow. Okay. So you're, you're 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 using your like a HELOC to pay this back with the cash flow that you already have, plus the earned cash flow from the asset. And so notes are perfect for it. Notes are a great avenue for it. There's other things that work as well. That's what I had been investing in. I was just poking around and one came through and I was like, was, you know, I had sat there for a while and then this was somebody I know and somebody that's, you know, a friend for 70 and he had it listed there and I was like, yeah, what the heck? Maybe I'll make him an offer and see if he bites my head off, you know, maybe I'd say like, say, hey man. And so, and I, the payment history was perfect. Like it was like, you know, I was like, this, this, this person has not missed a payment and it was like, not just not missed a payment, but it was like, it must be on automatic payments because it was like, it was like the same date. So it seemed like it was pretty low risk. Very so low risk. And smaller so balance, low risk, short term, mm-hmm. high coupon. Right. And I, you know, I asked Chris. Sounds I was like, like a why are you to me. Yeah. And I, I, I said, you know, hey, is, what's the deal with this? And why are you selling all, you know, all the standard questions? And he's supposed to say, hey, look, we're liquidating some of our lower band price assets. That's it. He's like, it's, it's a perfect asset. We're just focused on the higher stuff now. And so, all right. Which is... 
that's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. That's the, the natural progression is when you start getting into this space, oftentimes you do what you did. You buy something small that's performing. Mm -hmm. You start learning, you get your feet wet. The longer you're in it, the more capital you acquire, whether it's your own or take in capital partners, you start taking bigger bites of the apple. Yeah. And you learn that while well, you can take bigger bites of the apple, some of the smaller price band stuff, it's just, you just want to get, you're just like, look, I'm just going to move this one off the books and mm -hmm. we're going to redistribute that capital in something that's, you know, at a higher price band, which is fine because getting into the space or if you're somebody with a self-directed retirement account, a TARDIS fund, this is perfect for TARDIS. Mm -hmm. Those smaller price band assets are great. Yeah. You can chunk out 10, 15, 20 grand at a time and mm -hmm. start earning, you know, what's your yield right now? Uh, I, I mean, I have to adjust it based off what I paid for servicing, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a kind of a shocker. So let's dive into that since you brought it up. What are some, it sounds like there was some, um, the payment history was good. The asset's good. Yeah, the only equity thing, in the asset. Yeah, very, very, very. A lot very, of a lot of equity. Mm, yeah, but there was some. There's some downside to this that you didn't take into account when you got into it. I mean, I, I probably should have checked with the county specific, and then I, I knew it was it was in PA, so I already Pennsylvania. Knew, yeah, so I already knew. I was like, okay, it's Pennsylvania, but it was it was just that it was like, what was the issue? What was the issue? Is it expensive? What's expensive? The recording. The, the reco recording. The recording. You, you, you hadn't said recording yet. Oh, I hadn't said recording yet. You said servicing. Oh, uh, so, yeah, the servicing is nothing. But the recording fee was, and then I, I didn't know like if it's different for the like a assignment of mortgage versus a, a deed. Like, and I put the actual amount that was the taxable amount. So that's what got it so expensive. It was like five hundred, or it, it was it was a lot of money. And I was like, God dang! It was it was it was a more than I expected. You know, like I knew it might have <laughs> been a hundred bucks or something, but. I wasn't expecting that high. It was 500, you said? Yeah, it was around there. And I was like, God, Lee. I, and then it was hard to do. Like, you know, I, I was, remember I had to fill out all this other paperwork and stuff. And so I was like, yeah. you know, I kind of went through the process that, you know, so many have talked about. And I'm just like, you know, Pennsylvania is just a rough one. But it was like, I knew it was going to be rough. But I was like, I wanted to go through it so that I can understand this better from a user's perspective. You know, if there's someone else that's MPA, like in Pennsylvania, like that. What are they? What might they deal with? Even stuff like stay with the same servicer, but what was those things with reaching out? When did I reach out? How that process went? What's needed for starting with the servicer? You know, do you need a power of attorney? Do you need this? You know, all those things like that. And it's like, huh. And so just learning the different processes of the servicer I went with, and then when in that process do you actually start the process of reaching out to them saying, hey, I'm buying this loan. Mm -hmm. So that it because I had seen it so many times, I I kind of knew where I was going to do it. As soon as we assigned the, the PSAs, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to them, because I already, I already know who they are. And so so I just did that already, and then, you know, but still even that took a, a while. Mm -hmm. By the time the, the loan finally closed, everything was already there. So actually, uh, I already had servicing set up like at the end of the transaction. Did you change servicers? No. Left it no. there. Smart. Why? Why? Because I don't want to upset the <laughs> perfect pay history. <laughs> it's perfect, you know. It's yeah. like, I was like, no reason to screw that up. And it's a servicer that I, you know, we know him and I, you know, heard good things about him. So it's like, well, I'm not changing. Why? So that was that was pretty much it. Now it's just, you know, the first payment comes in uh, November. You know, so good to go. I think I even got October because uh, we, we, I think I set the cutoff date for. You we closed on it in September, right? Ideally, there was a a part in the process that took way longer than expected. It kind of deviated from the standard process mm -hmm. paper stack and it just took, I was like, what's going on? It's been like, but I wasn't that worried. You know, I was like, whatever. What I don't. kind of due diligence did you run on it? Did you order a BPO? I didn't, no. I, did you order a title? No. No, I mean, a lot of this is based, and this is something I wouldn't say maybe do, but like a lot of it was based on. Hey, the first note I bought, I didn't do either of those two things. Right, but it was based off relationship. There was, you know, I have a sort of trust factor with mm -hmm. him, and I would imagine with everything else performing and everything, and the, I, I took a look at the house, you know, from the outside and looked. Sure. Yeah. So looked you did some, did some. Yeah, I did like the uh, high level. Yeah, high level stuff. You just didn't maybe do title or BPO, mm -hmm. which it matures in thirty two. Mm -hmm. So I figured, you know, they were going to keep going. If anything, they would have a payoff. You know, I, mean, I would hope that may happen. And once it gets closer and closer, they just might be able to knock it out. Maybe, maybe not. But, like, the whole idea was that everything kind of had, like, a, I just mostly off trust. That's a, you know, in this industry, sure. that, that's 
That's if true. I was to buy a note from Rick, I'd probably do the same thing. You know what I mean? I probably wouldn't. I thought you were going to say I'd probably order a BPO. <laughs> and <I don't> <laughs> <see>. <laughs> no. I would, Title search. I mean, it, it's been around that long. I would imagine they're doing everything else right. I'm sure there's right. not bad yeah. taxes. So, so that's, that's good. What, like, what would be a piece of advice that you would give to f- people getting into the space? I mean, I just would say just, it's not as scary as you think. Like, I'm very systems oriented. Like, I follow a to-do list on everything. And that's very much... Everything. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I do it with my personal stuff, everything. Like, everything's, everything's a to-do list. And so, like, that's just, I just need to do this, 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 this. And then when I do that, I'm like, okay, well, everything checked off. And I, I don't have any butterflies or funny feelings in my stomach. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. Just do it. You know, and that's it. And then... Do it again. You know, just keep doing it over so and over So systems. Again. So set up your system. Like if, if you were, if I was going to break down that pile of words there into a coherent thought, it would be, <laughs> I like to have systems. Set up your systems. Set up, yes, just have your system. We have, a, we have an article inside of the knowledge base that's basically his due diligence process that I, I put into a to-do list. <laughs> so it's already there. All you have to do is just follow that if you really want to go deep into what he, what he did. I will say that the one thing that was big because it is an order note, was a collateral file. I had changed hands a couple of times. The thing was this thick. Oh, yeah. And I was like, now I don't know where the hell to put it. I'm like, where are we going to put this thing? It's still sitting on my desk. I'm like, hey, I've got to put this somewhere. So, I don't know. Did you record your assignment? Oh, yeah. And it was the, oh, the recorded the, you recorded the D because it was a land contract. That's right. And so that's all done. Servicer has a copy of it. All right, man. Well, Brett Berkey, thank you for sharing your knowledge, uh, systems, your first thing. Remember to look at the recording costs. You can do that on the county. Just go type in, was it like, uh, what, are you, what are you typing? County recorder's office. and then Oh, yeah, recorder of deeds. Mm-hmm. Um, they call it the comptroller here, mm-hmm. Orange County comptroller in Florida. But recorder of deeds will get you there and just ask them what the cost is going to be and right. go from there. Yeah, and if you're watching this, know that in the academy there are simulators. They're, they're working. They're, they're alive. The simulation part works just fine. And there, there will be more coming. So we've, we've launched the first two about how to use calculators, and then the second one's about understanding driving virtual drive-bys. Yep. And one of them works. Rick, Rick uh, They're my, great. They're flawless. <laughs> one of them, uh, the numbers are off, but we'll fix it. Yeah, it's just, I should have. Yeah, it's all good. No, it's, um, it's a lot of work Brad put into that, and the, you don't realize how much I's you have to dot or how many T's you have to cross. And when you get in there and you're doing, setting up a simulator that could have, you know, five different outcomes depending on how you run your due diligence or how you execute your arithmetic. <laughs> Yeah. It takes a lot. It's a lot of detail. So I'm really excited about it. It's something that's it's really going to be good. I think it'll really help people cross that threshold of wondering if they can buy a note to actually running through the, the due diligence and the process to going ahead and buying their first note. So it's going to be great. Um, yeah, the first two are kind of basic, simple yes, no's. But what I have in my head, the shower thoughts of where we can go with this is multiple different directions. And it could be... The good thing is it's going to be the wax on, wax off. You can read all the theory you want with the, the academy, see it, but then this, the simulator. Oh, this are, is where the rubber hits the road. This right. is where you get to go through it and drive around the track and realize that if you crash, it's okay because it's just fake money. Right. And the good thing is, is that's already included in the academy. So okay. if you have the academy, this is there now, too. That's it. So we are done for this episode. Yep. Come join us. Uh, this is out after, I assume, Node Expo. This mm. is already out. Yeah. Uh, we had a good time at Node Expo. It was great. <laughs> I hope Very everybody good. enjoyed my uh, my TED Talk type speech up there. Uh, what if? Ask about Dart AI. If you're not familiar with it, there was a uh, paperstack.com forward slash Dart, D-A-R-T, and uh, that'll take you to our AI page explanation video and let you know what cool things we're doing on the cutting edge of technology. And I think that's it. We'll that's it. get you guys on the next episode. See, See ya. Are you new to the mortgage note industry? Have you been wanting to learn the step-by-step process to purchase your first mortgage note? Well, you're in luck. We've convinced our CEO, Rick Allen, to break down everything he knows about mortgage note investing. Through a series of 50 videos, you'll get everything from start to finish of where to purchase notes, how to purchase notes, and all of Rick's investing techniques he has developed over the many years. From performing note tactics to non-performing notes, Rick gives you everything he knows about investing. 
bonuses include our glossary of industry terms, Rick's own proprietary calculators he created to evaluate notes, discounts from our partners, our Rolodex of vendors, a private Facebook group, along with a lot more. We've packed so much content into the Academy to take you from beginner to expert in no time. To learn more about the Academy, go to academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. Again, that is academy.paperstack.com slash welcome.